Good morning everyone, it's 16th of October 2022 and I'm here at Changi Terminal 3 to catch my flight to Bhutan. Druk Air Royal Bhutan Airlines is the national carrier of the Kingdom of Bhutan. Since Bhutan reopened to tourists in September 2022, there's only one flight per week from Singapore to Paro International Airport. It leaves Singapore every Sunday at 12.30 in the afternoon and flies back every Saturday at 8.05 in the morning. So the queue is finally moving after 45 minutes. After one and a half hours in the check-in counter, I was able to check in and go through immigration. And uh, you have to go through the immigration officer for flights to Bhutan so you cannot do the automatic um, scanning of your passport and your boarding passes. I'm on my way to board the airplane and I'm one of the last persons to actually board this plane. So it's my first time to fly drop air and hopefully it's gonna be a very good experience. Thank you. Okay. So, so, excuse me. So the business class is full. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Um, it's parking. The economy seats are pretty standard, and the legroom is sufficient for a comfortable short flight. The planes do not have monitors, but they offer an in-flight entertainment system that connects to your mobile devices such as phones and tablets. Alright, so this is what I've ordered in Drop Air. This is the food that they serve. Um, so I ordered the rice and the chicken, served bread and butter, some salad, some cake, and chili. The flight takes around 6 hours, including a stopover at Guwahati, India, for 30 to 45 minutes to disembark and embark passengers. During this quick stopover, passengers headed to Bhutan were not allowed to leave the plane. Airport officers went inside and asked the remaining passengers to identify their hand-carried bags to ensure that no one has mistakenly taken others' belongings or left theirs behind. Indian visa is also not required if you are not disembarking at Guwahati. As soon as we took off Guwahati, there was another meal service consisting of a cupcake, a cheese and cucumber sandwich, and a savory pie. The second leg of the flight took around 35 minutes. Paro International Airport is the only international airport in Bhutan. It is also known as one of the most dangerous airports in the world with very few pilots certified to land. I chose seat 14F, which was a window seat on the right side of the plane. And the view I had right before landing were beautiful mountains and snow-capped mountains. That was one of the most scenic landings I've ever experienced. It was so fantastic to see the landscape, the mountains, and the snow-capped mountains as you land here in Paro Airport. And the short turns added some thrill to the actual landing of the plane. But overall, we didn't feel any turbulence, and the flight was um, smooth. So I can't wait to explore Bhutan. Thank you. Oh. All right. Oh. <laughs> it's 
So welcome to the Kingdom of Bhutan. I should remove the mask. Okay, my new friend here asked me to remove my mask to breathe some fresh air. It's really nice. Wow. The landing was a very majestic uh, experience with all the scenic mountain ranges and the snow-capped mountains. It was really a very memorable experience. After immigration, I exchanged Singapore dollars to Bhutanese Mule Room and bought a local SIM for 7 days of unlimited data. So we finally arrived here in Bhutan and I'm very lucky to have a Bhutanese uh, seatmate in the plane, Mr. Um, Sonam. Here he is. I think you should go from that side. From this side? From right side. Oh, okay. Oops. So it's a very unique airport. The temperature is just nice. It's not very cold yet. And now I need to... Oh, there. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Bhutan. Thank you so much. So, yeah, it was a very scenic landing. And, yeah. They said it's gonna be turbulent, but there was no turbulence in oh, okay. the descent. So I was really happy. Yeah, okay. was really glad. <laughs> Would you like to sit in the front? Yes, yes, I'd love to. Okay, so this is, I guess, my car for mm -hmm. the trip. The Kingdom of Bhutan is a landlocked country in South Asia, sandwiched between China in the north and India in the south. It has a total land area of around 38,400 square kilometers, with elevations ranging from 300 meters in the southern foothills to over 7,000 meters in the north. In June of 2021, Bhutan had a population of around 780,000 people, almost half of which live in urban areas. Tourism in Bhutan is still relatively young and opened only to foreign tourists in 1974. It is founded on the principle of sustainability, which means that tourism must be environmentally and ecologically friendly, socially and culturally acceptable, and economically viable. As part of the policy, the government implements a Sustainable Development Fee, or SDF, a tourism levy on all leisure tourists. All tourists other than nationals of India, Bangladesh, and Maldives are required to pay an SDF of 200 US dollars per person per night as per the Tourism Levy Bill 2022. The SDF contributes towards sustainable development initiatives that enhance the tourist experience. The levy does not include accommodation, transportation, and monument entrance fees. For this solo trip, I decided to book a package tour from Juk Asia called 7 Day Essential Bhutan Travel Plan. I will put the link in the description in case you're interested to learn more about it. Note that this travel and video are not sponsored by Druk Asia. Our first and only stop for the day was Buddha Point. This sitting Buddha statue measures 51.5 meters in height and is one of the largest sitting Buddha statues in the world. At the time of my visit, a lot of people from all over Bhutan came to the Buddha Point to participate in the last oral transmission led by the current chief abbot. After Buddha Point, we went straight to the hotel. Alright, so now I'm here at my first hotel called Hotel Damisa, which is in Timpu, the capital city of Bhutan. And I'm gonna give you a room tour. All right. So, so this is my room. Um, on the left will be the shower and the toilet and the lavatory. And you can see this is my bed. I think it's at least a I think this is a queen size bed and this is the television there's also a heater there's a work area 
there's a full body mirror here and some hangers um, to keep your clothes and um, bags there's a lamp beside the table in fact there are two lamps beside the table so that's it um, when I arrived when I arrived here at the hotel um, the service was impeccable they just took all of my luggages and my backpack and they brought it straight to my room um, so at the reception they asked for my passport to register me etc etc I was served um, chai tea and also some cookies and then um, one of them escorted me to my room and explained how to operate the heater how to operate the television etc so it was a very nice experience i feel like i'm a vip and everyone is just so polite so respectful so calm and so far my first day i'm quite enjoying it i met a few people and i was able to visit one tourist spot which is the buddha point um, and so i'm gonna head for dinner in a while and then take a shower and then rest for the night they serve the main course and there's a lot of food like this rice is normally this is a huge serving of rice this is more than one cup of rice that is typical um, in the philippines they serve me so apart from the rice they serve me pasta they serve me vegetables and another um, cucumber and carrots I think as a salad and there is a chicken dish for my protein and there's a potato dish which is a Bhutanese uh, dish which I forgot what it's called but there's really a lot of food that we're served I don't think I'm gonna finish everything and I said that there's also a dessert so I'll just try to eat as much as I can and enjoy the food. There is so much food for one person. Wow. 